Today we're gonna go. You know. Because it's. Just look at the world around you, right here on the ocean floor. Such wonderful things around you. What more is you looking for? Hey class, welcome back. Mr. G here. Today we're gonna to be talking about some cool pinch pot designs. Today's subject matter is gonna be ocean themed or under the sea. The artist for this piece, we're gonna be referencing Mary O'Malley's work, her bottom feeder series that she did. I think it was back in 2014, 2016. Date somewhere on the other video. So click the button up here so that you guys can check out the art history video that I did on her that helped inspire me and my students in the creation of these pieces. For this design, you guys are gonna be starting off with your sketchbooks. Now for your sketchbooks, you guys are gonna be sketching out some sea life, so sea creatures, anywhere from barnacles, I think these are urchin, kind of a sea anemone brain coral, starfish, or a one of those large giant clams. Now, these are just jumping off points in your sketch design that you guys are gonna be adding to uh, create more full rounded displays. But we use our sketchbook to facilitate the designs that we're gonna be putting onto our cups. And this is just to give you guys some groundwork, some basics so that you guys can get off on the right foot. All right, so standards. Today's standards that we're gonna be discussing is sketchbook design. Sketchbook, keeping that record of your process, how you start with your designs to how you get to a finished design. And we can see that process built in our sketchbook. That's number one. Number two, pinch pot design. So working with clay and how do we do a, pin, a proper pinch pot? Now, you're pinching, so you're, you're to do the pinch pot, you're pinching the clay between your fingers, hence, pinch pot I know it's like a novel idea some of the th some of the terms that we learn in here so for the pinch pot design you're gonna take a ball of clay pinch it out to create that pinch pot design and you're gonna add your sea life sculptural elements on the exterior of your piece so a couple terms again we have interior which is the inside of the cup exterior outside of the cup and we're gonna be using our designs from our sketchbook to add those designs onto our cup. Now for this piece, going through those steps again, we're gonna start off by making the pinch cup. So you're starting off with that ball of clay. Now from that ball of clay, you're gonna roll it up, use your hands to smash it together to get that nice rounded shape. After you've gotten the rounded shape, take your thumb, you're gonna dive into the middle of the ball of clay and that's gonna to start to expand out and create the pinch pot shape. Now, as you're pinching, you're going to be using your thumb and your forefinger to pinch f around, the, around the base of the, the structure of the clay. So you're, again, you're using equal amounts of pressure. So as I'm pinching, I'm gonna be taking my thumb, curving it a little bit into the base of the clay so that as I'm pinching, I'm pushing that bottom bit of the clay out more as I'm pinching to uh, create that nice interior cavernous space for my pinch pot. Now, once you've gotten the you're starting to get that structure in there. You want to make sure that your sides are evenly pinched as you're going around. Notice as I'm pinching it, I'm slowly rotating the piece around. As I'm rotating, pinch, rotate, pinch, rotate, pinch, rotate, again, over and over and over. And as I'm doing that, I'm ensuring that my walls of my pinch pot are gonna be the same uh, consistently throughout the entire piece. That is essential. You want that, in you want that consistency in your piece, especially anything that we do in ceramics class, uh, but specifically in the pinch pot. It's gonna make sure that your piece fires properly, as well as you have a nice finished cup design as well. Now, as we're pinching this, we'll continue to go around, 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 double checking around the walls, the top lip, this part up here, wanna make sure that all of that stuff is consistently the same thickness throughout our entire piece. Now, as it's as we're we'll continuing to work that out, test, ex, ex, uh, examine elements around the different, around the pinch pot to ensure that all sections of the pinch pot are evenly distributed. As you're doing this, sometimes these things happen to me as well. Your pinch pot is getting far too big for the size that you want to do. At this time, if you need to take a fettling knife, which is the knife that I'm using. Now, this is a fettling knife. 
you can cut sections of the clay apart and then piece it back together. So what I'm doing here is I'm cutting small V sections or I'm cutting down or I'm doing a cross cut. Now the cross cut, north, south, east, west, they've, they've cut a line on each, each of those spaces and I'm gonna overlap those two pieces of clay together and cut off the overlap section. I'm not gonna add that clay back into my piece while I'm forming this part. The reason being is because if I'm adding it in, I'm adding those thicker sides to thinner side walls I've already created. It's just too much clay for what I'm working with. Set that clay off to the side and continue to smooth out those sections so that all of your lines are properly smoothed out throughout the entire piece. Now, some other tools that you're probably gonna wanna use as you're smoothing out this cup is I've got a couple wooden ribs. These are usually used by the potter on the wheel. After you finish getting all those sides properly smoothed out, you might see some thicknesses in certain spaces. We're gonna bring in a fancy tool, the cheese grater. This is by far one of my favorite tools. It's just one of those things that you don't normally think of. Normally you have um, trim tools, which is one of the wire tools to trim off the excess. I prefer using this. Why? Because this is a lot more fun. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the side of our cheese grater, we're gonna trim down the base and around the edges of the cup. We're really making sure that our cup is properly smooth. This gives a nice way to smooth out your cup. Now, when I do this normally in class, I'm having my students build their pinch cup on day one. Day two is when they get to use the cheese grater. I don't let them use it on day one because the clay is still too soft to kind of start molding and manipulating that way. So you want to do this on day two. Give your clay a little time to breathe, rest, and firm up a little more because sometimes fresh clay doesn't play well with the, with the cheese grater. While on day one, I'm having my students build their pinch cup. After they're done building the pinch cup, they'll go ahead and start working on the additions, the things that are gonna be adding onto the exterior of the cup that are, are sea life applications. If you're doing this, I do recommend this as a, a minimum a two-day project. It just works better overall as you're, as, for, uh, for building purposes. Now, for your piece here, you've gotten your cup design. We're gonna be building some anemone sh shapes as well as uh, some sponge cones. For octopi, we have sponge shapes, which is going to be a hollowed out piece of clay. Again, I've, for this for this project, you're using non-conventional methods in creating those pieces. So we've rolled up a ball of clay on in, in our palms, and I'm using the end of a paintbrush to formulate those sponges and build those shapes around there. For octopus pieces, you're going to want to use a coiled piece of clay. Roll it out nice and neat on your board, and then you can use the again the end of a um, paintbrush to put the dots in there for the suckers, and that'll help you create that tentacle shape. Lastly, we're gonna save some of our shavings from the cheese grater that we can use as seagrass or additional parts of the coral reef around our cup. It just adds another level of texture to our piece. As I'm applying these pieces to my cup, all I'm doing is I'm taking a bit of slip, slip water. Uh, I keep different buckets of clay water around, either on the table or in the back with the, next to the pug mill, and we keep scraps in there you know what's really good the really dried out pieces that you cut the day before with your cheese grater put those in water let them soften up and then paint those on with a paintbrush nice thick soupy slip that properly goes on the cup you can add your pieces into it. it's a nice tip i love doing it it's great now as we're adding it on again i'm putting a little bit of slip every time i add on a single piece the reason being is so that i want to make sure that these things are properly adhered to the piece even though i'm keeping my hand on the inside of the cup to press in so i'm firmly pressing those pieces together by adding that pressure from one side to the other now lastly before you finish the piece as always make sure that you take your piece flip it over on the base sometimes you can use a pen or a pencil now today's definitely one of those days for unconventional tools so i've got a paint stir from local hardware store i'm using this to pat around the outside of the cup and the reason that we pat around the outside of the cup is again ensure the shape you want to make sure that you're having that nice proper shape to the exterior of your piece also if it's kind of lumpy this knocks out some of those lumps and you can trim out the clay on the inside of the cup rather than the outside of the cup this makes sure that we have a nice smooth even finish on the exterior now this is a tool that i personally love as for when you're dealing with 
doing detail work on the outside where you needed to draw where you need to draw a different design on there also it's really good for your signature if you're into nail art you've seen these things before it's a dot dotting tool little little dot that's on the end of the piece here that dot is what's going to carve into the clay this just makes sure that you have a nice even uh line as you're putting that into the clay i will say that it works best if the piece is leather hard at the when you start to do this, it just works better. Fresh clay, it does have a hard time working on. Design in the foot. Once we have our design in there, now the piece is ready to go into the fire, and then you're, and then you're all done with your piece. So, some different additions that I've added on mine. I have the octopus tentacle here, seagrass going around the piece, so it looks a lot like brain coral. I've carved some coral lines on the side, some different architectural pieces. If, if you look at a coral reef, the way that the pieces stack on top of each other, again, sea anemone pieces off the side. Also, if you don't have one of these uh, tools to carve in your name with, I've made some tools out of an old wire coat hanger. Uh, we use these when we're also doing crochet in class. I've taken, taken some needle nose pliers, per, curve around the, the hook for that, but the uh, end of it you just can write with. One thing if you have to cut these, one wire cutters are your best friend to, to cutting these through. The ends will be sharp because of the nice, the pinch of the, the uh, pliers. So you can use a rat tail file just to grind it on. Works the best way to do that. Over here, we've got one of my student's pieces. It's a nice example. I love this piece. Student did an awesome job on this. I'm pretty sure you got an A. Uh, so we have the exterior of the piece, that nice brilliant white for the French cup design. I love the, the coloring on this, the juxtaposition of this light color that looks like proper porcelain ware with all the funky colors of the sea. I do wish that he added more colored glaze on the onto the um, the bits of the coral elements that were added, just because you have this nice bright red tentacle, the octopus piece that he added on here, that would help showcase more of the sea life that was added on here instead of these muted colors. But overall, it's a good structure piece. I love the structure of this piece. So seeing this as the finished product, I hope that you guys create some beautiful artworks just the same. And as always, let's go ahead and take care of our homework, which is don't forget to like, subscribe, share on all the various platforms. Don't forget to make sure that we get the message out there. Want more students to, to make wonderful art. As always, if you have a question, comment, or concern, raise your hand down in the comments below. Happy to get back in touch with you guys. As always, I will see you guys next class. Until then, later guys. Sounds like a bloody chainsaw up in here. Today class, we're learning about clays. We're going to learn about the wonderful world of clay. Oh, that's made. Let's go ahead and uh, let's just like recycle this. I think there's a dishwasher. You know, weird sounds happen when we're trying to record. Oh, you want to just do all these fun food things with this thing? Ceramics class. No, this would be a nice noodle bowl. This is what we put our noodle noodles in. Have a this is a nice. Oh, excuse me. I ordered the large cappuccino. Please, sir. I'd like some more.